In the Power Ghost universe, characters are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the writers, who illustrate their crimes, and the audience, who judge the offenders accordingly. This video series is dedicated to the latter. Hey, welcome back, guys. Tariq St. Patrick has come a long way since pulling that fateful trigger way back in the conclusion of OG Power Season 6. Over the last three seasons of his own epic, he's committed many a heinous act, and in today's video, I'll leave you to be the judge of whether or not Tariq deserves to live or unceremoniously perish. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. And lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. Before we get to the more reprehensible actions of Tariq St. Patrick, I'd like to point out several of his righteous deeds, because surely not all of his actions are heinous, deadly, treacherous, or dare I say, evil, are they? Let us count the ways. During the first season of Ghost, we witnessed a focus to read, attempting to get his mother out of the prison system, a place she rightfully deserves to be, arguably, but doesn't necessarily deserve the legal consequences, as the place she once said was due to the actions of her son, Tariq, actions that she herself would have surely taken had the original plan been followed. Remember, Tasha was supposed to pull that trigger on Ghost, but as Tariq so wisely calculated, only he could get that close to his father with a firearm. Had Tasha attempted to take out the Ghost Man, she likely would have been taken out herself and unraveled an entirely new series of events leading to a war between the father and the son, a war that the politically driven Ghost Man would have been more than prepared for. But things didn't quite pan out this way, and Tariq would pull the trigger, and Tasha would subsequently take the fall. The entire first season is highlighted by Tariq trying to free her from this self-imposed place of bondage and going through any means, be it legal or illegal, in order to see this mission through. In doing so, Tariq would dip into the drug game like never before, establish a relationship with the Tejada family, garner help from an excellent yet seedy lawyer in Davis McLean, and fight like hell to keep everyone off of his trail. Which leads us to our first piece of evidence in the negative towards Tariq, and that would be the murder of his intelligent yet game goofy professor, Jabari Kelly Reynolds, which if you remember his story from the first season, you remember where the Kelly moniker derives from. But let's not lose focus here. Jabari would have his life ended by Tariq in an effort to cover up his true identity and story from ever being exposed to the masses. That is, the story of a troubled young man who through a set of circumstances, some chosen and some imposed, would end up in a drug game among a drug dealing family and have to survive those angles while simultaneously getting his education, gaining his freedom and access to a society that has socially set him out in certain respects. This is a story that would have revitalized Jabari's career, which was on the men due to his last novel not doing so well. But alas, Tariq couldn't be the springboard to that man's success, and he would ensure his silence for seasons to come via the most trustworthy tool in his arsenal, and that is the bullet. But where treachery sits on one end for Tariq, righteousness stands on another. And in the very next season, that righteousness will come in the form of his little sister and his actions towards getting her back with her family as opposed to being lost to the foster care system, which was a last minute red button ploy by his slain father, Ghost, who out of fear of retribution against his bloodline, put parameters in place to protect Yasmin by any means. Tariq, though righteously wanting to reestablish his family, foolishly believed that his current lifestyle was suited in completing the aim. And season two would outline such foolery as he expanded his drug dealing enterprise from the street corner to the digital world, developing an app with his partner in crime, Brayton, and thus dealing drugs throughout his university. He did this while also fighting a case of his own. As Tasha was tried for murder in season one, so would Tariq be tried for murder in season two. And although it wasn't for a murder he actually committed, it was a murder he was indeed connected to, and that was of a police officer. In this way, Tariq was getting his karma back for the previous murders he committed and having his day in court, though not for a murder he actually did, for murder itself all the same. Because up to this point, Tariq had several bodies. If we include Ray Ray from OG Power, his own father from OG Power, and of course, his professor from Ghost Season 1. These murders, along with getting involved in the drug game for no good reason, finessing his partner in crime, fumbling his inheritance, and most disrespectfully, 
juggling three baddies in one series and subsequently fumbling them all is more than enough cause for a potential death sentence. Because after all, even the ghost man didn't fumble three women in one series. This puts Tariq in the driver's seat of the Professional Fumblers Association, a card-carrying member, if you will. But all jokes aside, there is a major clue that may hint to his actual death in the upcoming and final season of Ghost. If you remember, way back in season one, there's a scene between Tariq and Lauren where they're discussing the Stranger novel. Up until this discussion, Tariq hadn't read the book, but had just completed it upon this meeting. Tariq calls the book boring because the main character shoots a guy and the offense is missable. Lauren defends the main character's ignorance due to a lack of awareness in the moment. His decision isn't backed by anything real, but merely happenstance. Tariq, having just killed someone for a good reason, or at least reasonable enough to him, pushes back on the notion of murder just for murder's sake. He posits that killing someone is always a real decision. Even carrying a gun is a real decision. And that Meryl Saul, the main character of The Stranger, doesn't want to own up to it. And he's mad that people hate him for it. Then Tariq adds, but people will always hate you for what you do. You can't care about that. Through this quote, Tariq is low-key breaking the fourth wall and addressing the overwhelming hatred that his character was receiving at that moment as a result of his decision to kill the legendary Ghost Man, who was a beloved staple in Power's lore and undoubtedly its greatest martyr. Then, Lauren adds a critical piece to this scene, stating that, quote, but in the end he's killed because people didn't like how he reacted to his mother's death. And this is a parallel to the indifference that Tariq has shown to the death of his own father, even up to present day. Tariq retorts with, people didn't like him because he shot the guy. He was killed because he committed a murder. He knew what he was doing. He knew the consequences. He still pulled that trigger. He did it anyway. Mersal in the story is sentenced to death at the end of The Stranger. And the debut episode of Ghost parallels Mersal's indifference with Tariq's own. So my question is this, ladies and gentlemen, is Tariq indeed The Stranger? And if so, is this the largest looming clue to his uncertain fate? And if he is indeed the stranger, do you, the audience, believe that he deserves death? Such a fate that he knew was possible when he inevitably pulled that trigger. Be sure to drop me your opinions in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are power fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.